Hello, my name is Michael Mattis from Grand Saline ISD, and this is my presentation over uh, what I call championship uh, A plus speech, um, but specifically going to be about impromptu and about modern oratory. Um, so there's some information about me. Um, I have uh, obviously a number of uh, college degrees, plus I have uh, worked with UIL as a teacher, a coach, a UIL coordinator, a UIL director, a director of student activities, assistant principal and principal. And I've coached and taught in numerous places. And obviously I've experienced UIL as a student, coach, coordinator, administrator, judge, contest manager, and now as a parent. Um, so I have a, a lot of different perspectives. Um, so in terms of uh, modern oratory, then it requires what I like to call motivation. Uh, and then good impromptu speaking requires improvement. Um, so I've basically created an uh, anagram for you to be able to understand those things and improvement. So we'll start with modern oratory, which uh, students are to deliver a three to six minute speech without the use of notes on their topic. And in the process of preparing for the contest, then you define the problem, determine the pro and con issues, research the issue, look at both sides of the issue, reach a conclusion, and then support that conclusion with documentation. So it is a prepared speech and it is over a current event topic. It requires uh, quite a bit of research and writing and in general, uh, students consider it to be difficult, although I can show you some techniques that will make it less difficult for you. So back to our anagram. So the first thing is momentum. You wanna make sure that your speech has a natural flow as it goes from one point to another. It's gonna help you, uh, it makes it easier to learn and not necessarily memorize. We don't wanna memorize word for word. We just wanna have a general idea of what we're going to talk about. Um, and that way, if one part is removed, then your speech uh, should maybe stutter a little bit, but it would not come to a dead stop. It also needs to be a reflection of you, not your coach. Um, unless you feel ownership in that process, then you're never going to really find ownership in your speech. So it needs to be your ideas uh, because ownership is truth. We want to find a theme that's meaningful to you, that's also understanding, uh, understandable to the audience. We want to get some unifying concepts that kind of connect everything for you. Uh, and remember that audiences are going to remember brilliant themes. Uh, not brilliant points. So come up with really good themes, not necessarily really good points, because that's what audiences are going to remember and judges as well. We also want to go off that instinctive reaction. As soon as you read the topic, then what's your first reaction to it? How do you feel? Um, that's often going to be the most truthful. And then I, I sort of tell my students that you can amend that first reaction, but we should never want to change it um, because that was uh, what you truthfully felt. Um, we need to give some value to our uh, audience. Why, why should your audience care about the topic? What is it that you want your audience to come away with when you're done presenting? Um, good speeches are always going to have a value above and beyond their original purpose. You're not just talking about the topic, but you're telling us why that topic is important and why it should matter to us. And then judges can always tell um, who wants to perform um, and who wants to present on that day. Um, if you're, uh, if you don't look enthusiastic, if you don't look energetic, um, then the judges can read that. Um, and it's hard to vote against someone you like. So I encourage my students to always be the most likable person in the room um, because it's also easy to vote against someone you don't like. I try to tell them to really be simple. Uh, don't overly complicate things. Um, I just have confidence in my students that they're capable of success and I pass that confidence on to them. Um, you don't want to be stressed. Stress is going to um, give you a lot of different things that are going to make it more difficult for you to present uh, the way that you're capable of. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about is impromptu speaking. Um, and impromptu speaking, on the other hand, is uh, they're going to give you a topic and then they're going to give you about three minutes to prepare. <coughs> and then uh, you would need to deliver that speech. So these topics are going to be much more personal. Um, it is an unprepared speech in the sense that you didn't have the topic prior to drawing it. Um, there's a research element to it in terms of thinking about what possible topics might pop up, um, but not as much research as there is in uh, modern oratory. And there's definitely a speed of thought uh, that occurs as well. Um, you think quick on your feet. And so there is the anagram for that. 
So the first thing is that interesting speakers are going to be good speakers. Um, you have about nine seconds to convince someone to listen to you. So you need to do something in that first nine seconds to convince them that you're the type of person that needs to be listened to. Um, and then what are you going to do to keep their interest peaked once you have it? Um, I encourage uh, some movement. So we use a, a baseball metaphor in the sense that your, you, your introduction would be uh, at home plate and then you would move to what would essentially be first base, if you will, for your uh, first uh, point and then sort of move to second base for your third point, third base for your third, and then you kind of come back to the pitcher's mound, if you will. What that does is it allows us to eliminate a lot of our nervous movement um, and it motivates any time that you're going to move. And of course, it demands attention. I encourage uh, my students to give two or three speeches a week. Uh, perfect practice makes them perfect. And the more times that they give those speeches, the more confidence they get. And uh, you get confidence from performing at a high level over and over again. Um, I tell my students to never get out researched. Uh, always be thinking about the topics. Always be researching life, uh, asking yourself questions to try to figure out, you know, what where your uh, value systems are and, and your thought processes so that you can continually be able to answer the questions. Uh, I think they need to be orderly. They need a good attention-grabbing introduction, some strong main points, momentum-inspired subpoints, a memorable conclusion, and then something at the end that requires thought or action by your audience. Uh, I encourage them to record their voices with and without video, do speaking exercise, listen to other people, try to eliminate accents, slurs, repeats, mispronunciations, things like that. Good speeches are going to have emotion. If you can make your judge feel emotion or forget that they're judging, um, then you'll typically win. Um, so we want to try to bring that in. Now, we don't want to overly emote, like give too many emotions, but we certainly don't want to deny that. Um, I teach students to use nine focus points around the room, uh, just nine different places that they're going to look um, so that they're not just staring in one spot, but they're also not just staring off in space. Or I tell them to think about it like a compass that moves from east to west or a clock that moves from three to nine or nine to three. Um, or even stage directions if they're a, a theater kid. Um, a way to keep their focus to the front, but different spots that they could look. Um, and then <laughs> it should be fun for the students and for the teacher. Um, so we take time to spend time. We make it thrilling. Winning and losing should come second to having a positive experience. So here's some uh, sample impromptu topics. Uh, again, we don't know what those impromptu topics are going to be until you show up for contests, but here's some samples. If you could only accomplish one thing in your life, what would it be? Uh, the one world event I remember most about this year, which I think is pretty self-explanatory um, for this year because it would be COVID. Um, if you can make a child feel special, um, if I can be president for a day, to me, success in life means or uh, why people are afraid to fail. All of these are just topics. You have three minutes to come up with some ideas. We want introduction, two main points, some sub points, conclusion, and then you got to go and present it. All right, so that's kind of a brief overview of uh, impromptu and modern oratory, um, and I hope that this information is useful to you, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you as a judge and uh, certainly uh, watching you as you develop in uh, speech events. Um, I thank you for your time.